we want to find the solution of the given initial value problem. The first thing we should recognize looking at the differential equation is that this is a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which means it fits this form here where a, b, and c are constants and therefore we can find the general solution using the characteristic equation given here where the values of a, b, and c again are the constants from this differential equation. And then based upon the solutions to this quadratic in terms of r, we can determine the general solution will be in this form here and then using the initial conditions we can find the values of c sub one and c sub two. So for the first step, we need to recognize that a is equal to one, b is equal to negative six, and c is equal to nine. So the characteristic equation would be r squared minus six r plus nine equals zero. And now let's see if we can solve this by factoring. If it does factor, it'll factor into two binomial factors where the first terms in the binomial factors would be r and r. And now we want to find the factors of positive nine that add to negative six, which happen to be negative three and negative three. Notice in this case, this is a perfect square trinomial because we have two equal binomial factors. Notice the first factor is equal to zero when r equals three, and the second factor is also equal to zero when r equals three. So notice how we have two real but equal roots to the quadratic equation, which does affect the form of the general solution. Again, because we have two real equal roots to the characteristic equation, this will be the form of the general solution. And just for a quick review, remember if the characteristic equation had two distinct real roots, this would be the form of the general solution. But in our case, since we have two equal real roots, this is the form of the general solution. Notice how the second term here has an extra factor of x. And if we had complex roots, this would be the form of the general solution. So now going back to our example, we will now substitute r equals three to find our general solution. So y of x equals c sub one, a constant, times e raised to the power of r times x, which would be three x, plus c sub two x e to the r times x power, which again is three x. But now because this is an initial value problem, we'll use the fact that y of zero equals one and y prime of zero equals two to determine the values of c sub one and c sub two. Notice how to do this, we'll also have to find y prime of x due to this second initial condition. Let's go ahead and set this up on the next slide. So to find y prime of x, notice how we'll have to apply the chain rule to find the derivative of the first term, and then we'll have to apply the product and chain rule to find the derivative of the second term. So the derivative of c sub one e to the three x would be c sub one e to the three x times three, or three c sub one e to the three x, and then to find the derivative of the second term, Let's go ahead and let c sub two x be our first function and e to the power of three x be our second function. Remember the product rule would be f times g prime plus g times f prime. So for f times g prime, we're gonna have c sub two x times e to the three x times three, or three c sub two x e to the three x, and then plus g times f prime, which would just be e to the three x times c sub two, or c sub two e to the three x. And now, since we know that y of zero equals one, we'll substitute zero for x and y of x, and though the function value must be one. Well, if x equals zero, we'd have c sub one times e to the zero. e to the zero is equal to one, so we have c sub one plus well, if x is zero, notice how the second term would be zero, and this function value must be one. So right away we know that c sub one must equal one. And now because we know y prime of zero equals two, we'll substitute zero into the derivative function and know the function value must be two. 
So again, if x equals zero, this first term would be three c sub one. The second term would be zero because of the factor of x. And the third term would be c sub two times e to the zero, or just c sub two. And we know that this must equal positive two. But again, we know that c sub one is equal to one, so we can simplify this to three plus c sub two equals two. Subtract three on both sides, and we know that c sub two must equal negative one. Well, now that we know c sub one and c sub two, we'll perform substitution into y of x, again, for c sub one and c sub two, to find the solution to the initial value problem. The solution would be y of x equals c sub one, which is positive one, times e to the three x, or just e to the three x. And then c sub two is negative one, so we'll have minus one x, or just minus x, e to the power of three x. This would be our solution to the initial value problem. One thing we could do to check our work is to graph this function and make sure it passes through the point zero one, since we're given y of zero equals one. Let's finish by doing that. So the red graph is the function that we found. Here's the point zero one, and notice how the function does pass through the point zero one. I hope you found this explanation helpful.